What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can It's a dangerous thing to agree to one more scripture. I can read the whole chapter, isn't it? Yes. But I have negotiated and said one more scripture. Okay. But it won't be too long. 103. Psalm 103. Uh, so I had not read the Bible. 
I come from atheist home. My father was a well-known atheist in my hometown. And I, though I went to St. Thomas's, and we have to go to chapel every morning. Uh, but by the time I was doing A-level, I didn't believe. I was arrogantly atheistic. Uh, I was utterly soaked up with Darwin. And that's how I was talking. Then a friend uh, came into my life and he uh, began to uh, play chess with me. He, he, he won one game, I win the next game. So I had, I had respect for his brain. So I'm always criticizing. One day he said, Lalit, you're always criticizing the Bible. Have you read it? I said, rubbish. Who wants to read it? Uh, then he said, only a fool criticizes what he hasn't read. So I felt like shifting his... But true, isn't it? Only a fool criticizes. I said, give me a book. Uh, so he gave me a Bible. And he said, the first book is called Genesis. I did not know. He said, there's another book called Gospel of John. I did not know the word gospel. And he showed me the places. He said, start reading. Then I started reading and I found the Genesis account was quite, quite scientific. You know, I felt if this was done by a chap, this chap is scientific. Only thing, I, I didn't think it's God. But it was a good scientific account. Then I came to John chapter 8. In that chapter, uh, a woman is caught in the act of adultery. And in that country, adultery was a capital punishment. She has to be stoned to death. That's the punishment. And when she was brought before Jesus, Jesus said, he that hath no sin cast the first stone. When I read this, I'm reading this only to argue with my friend. His name was Tony. And uh, I'm reading only to argue. And, uh, and I found this. Jesus came off the pages and looked at me and said, that's your problem. You always have a stone in your mouth all the time you create an argument. I said, that is true. I create an argument. I have such a lot of knowledge. I can win the argument this way or that way. And I didn't realize my friends get hurt. But I wanted to win the argument. It, it was, I said, who is this? Who can, who can speak to me like this? So next time I met Tony for chess, I was silent. He said, why are you silent? You know, his brain was good, so he didn't fear me. He was not intimidated. He said, why are you silent? Uh, I said, you know, I was reading a book and I came to this chapter 8, do you know? I asked him, uh, there's this lady and Jesus spoke to him. And at the same time, Jesus spoke to me that, uh, about my nature. I said, how can Jesus Christ speak? He's dead. Then he said, no, he's alive. I said, no, he's dead. In my hometown on Good Friday, everybody wears black and goes to, goes to church. And they even make Jesus out of pulp and put him on a cross and, you know, all that. So I knew Jesus had died. Uh, then Tony said, that's true. Good Friday was the day we remember his death. But he came back to life and that's called Easter. I said, my hometown knows Easter. Because on Easter day, every junction has a pig slaughtered. And all my uncles and my cousins get drunk. My father was a teetotaler. So I said, that's Easter, isn't it? Tony said, that's a sad thing. But actually, Easter is when Jesus Christ came back to life. Can you imagine? 13 years at St. Thomas's, I did not know Easter is resurrection of Christ. Uh, so that day, Tony said, do you like to pray? I said, yes. And uh, he, he prayed with me. And uh, meaning, I told what he said. I said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me my arrogance. Please come into my heart. And as, it, as I said it, I found there's a safe place where Christ can come in. I had only brain, you know. My brain was full of knowledge. I read dictionaries. That's my nature. But this stopped a little. And I found there's a place in, I did not know to call it heart, but he came there and my way changed completely change. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read it from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. This is a change that will come. You will find in everything in life, you can say a thank you to Jesus. Shall we say together, when Christ comes into our heart, I can say thank you to everything that goes on in my life. 
for every provision for my parents for my education what happens to me daily he turns it around for such good some difficult situations don't change in 24 hours but it will eventually change we know when christ is working with us so when christ has come into that safe place bless the lord of oh my soul all that is within me will bless his holy name so then we don't get into fisty cups with people even when we negotiate when we go to negotiate a transaction we don't have to get hot and angry and get into crosswords because we know christ will work away bless the lord of oh my soul forget not all his benefits then through the day we can count the th good things that happened to us what we call, thought was happenstance we realize it wasn't happenstance it was a god stance god made an instance instant instance god made an instance to show himself for our good we understand that who forgives all your iniquities remember that word iniquity so forgiveness has the meaning of erasing it forever shall we say together forgiveness erases that inclination forever it doesn't have to surface again shall we give a hand clap to jesus erases it forever who redeems your life so redeem so he erases it forever now and he redeems the things that were lost to us isn't it opportunities relationships redeems what what does redeem mean that which was lost bring it back we know there were there were 100 sheep one was lost the shepherd brought it back there were 10 coins one was lost that lady found it because of the lamb there were two sons one was lost and he was brought back redeemed so if there's any misgiving you have i could have studied more or whatever christ is able to redeem it's a great word nothing is actually lost when redemption is possible shall we say together nothing is actually lost because redemption is possible never think it's gone forever a good relationship with your father is possible when redemption is there through jesus christ so i would like for you to recall the some some incident which was the most grievous incident in your life my father was a very strict person he he was a mathematician and mathematicians tend to be <coughs> strict in their personality i was just thinking today uh, historic those who like history tend to remember the past all the time what do you think about that and uh, the people who like geography they're like mountains and valleys all the time so just think about it yeah uh, so one day he got a li little late to pick me up from college every day he should drive me and pick me up one day uh, he got a little late so i decided to come by bus i had never come by bus before uh, so it got so late, you know, I thought I can get home before my father's car got home. It got late. So I got down at a particular place and I did not know the next bus. I had to walk four miles and I must have been about 12 years, 13 years old. And those fourth suitcase, who has gone to school with a fourth suitcase? Still, you must have, yeah. Now, it's a, you would not know all this, but I'm carrying my fourth, you know, it's a square thing. Uh, and you, had to, you take it and I'm walking, walking. Wednesday was half day in school. Now it's about 2.33. It is the sun and I'm walking. But my great fear is my father will jump on me. I'm walking and finally I sighted home. And my father is on the doorstep. Watching, wondering where I have gone. Because when he went to pick me up to school, I wasn't there. And then he knows that I don't have money for bus fare. I borrowed it from my cousin. So uh, he's there. I am here. Now I don't know whether to turn back and go or go in. I saw my father's best smile that day. He was so relieved that I had walked home. Not, not one word of reprimand. That's how it is. When we come to our father's house, he receives us with such a smile. Who redeems your life from uh, what went down, no? what went down, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy. This is our experience in Christ. So we are going to sing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound 
that saved the wretch like me. Shall we rise to our feet? So this is the first crown. Bible, uh, I, I did a study yesterday. I'll send you the clip. Please give your WhatsApp number and go. About 10 crowns. And I must, before we get to that, I must read this. There's a strange crown. Strange crown. An excellent wife. Proverbs 12, 4. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband. What do you think about that? So husband will say, you're my crown. Did he say that? Husband? Ranjan, we are looking at you. <laughs> yes. Meaning, uh, a wife protects the husband all the time, isn't it? Her, her memory in his heart, wherever he is, he remembers that her love protects him. Amen? Okay. That's why scripture says, Proverbs 12, 4, an excellent wife is the crown of a husband. There are nine others. I did only one in full. The crown of loving kindness that redeems all we think is lost. Did you understand that crown? Redeems, restores, gives back all we think is lost. Nothing is lost. When we come to Christ, he recovers. He recovers. He recovers. Amazing grace. 